U.S. President Barack Obama holds talks with uh, Xi Jinping in California on Friday. They will meet at the Annenberg Estate. So why this particular venue and what's expected to come out of the two-day summit? CCTV's Wang Guan has more from California. It's been called the Camp David of the West. Built half a century ago, Sunnylands was the winter home of the late billionaire publisher and philanthropist Walter Annenberg and his wife Leonor. The size of 100 football fields, the state has been the vacation site of many U.S. presidents. After leaving office, Richard Nixon found some peace and quiet in here after the Watergate scandal. Ronald Reagan celebrated 18 New Year's in the state, and here he developed a personal friendship with British Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher. And George H.W. Bush hosted a state dinner here for then-Japanese Prime Minister Toshiki Kaifu at a time when U.S. and Japan were on the verge of a trade war. Sunnyland's director Janice Lyle told CCTV the state is a perfect location for the upcoming meeting between President Obama and President Xi. Sunnyland offers itself up to make it possible for comfortable and relaxed conversation, and part of that is because of the um, inside-outside element of the house and its architecture. So we have walls of glass which allow um, the nature on the outside of the building to be seen from the inside and there are garden plantings inside the house and, along with the art and so there's a serenity and a beauty to the place which hopefully facilitates direct and straightforward conversations. Vice President Xi. Straightforward and less scripted. That's the kind of dialogues expected this time around. Kenneth Lieberthal was a senior advisor at the U.S. National Security Council, the very agency that first proposed Sunnyland's venue to the Chinese leadership. When they get together, it not be simply for a one-hour, what's what we would call a one-hour bilat, have consecutive translation. So if it's an hour meeting, each person gets about 15 minutes to say what they think. Of course, all of their agencies on each side have already given them talking points. So at the end of a meeting like that, there is very, very little opportunity for real exchange. Important to create an opportunity, if possible, where they could meet for a long time, uh, really get to talk, uh, get to explore each other's thinking about the future, what each leader thinks he politically can actually get done. The two leaders have tough issues to address, from claims of Chinese cyber attacks on U.S. companies China's regional territorial disputes, and U.S. military's rebalancing to the Asia-Pacific. While U.S. officials are playing down the prospects of any major breakthroughs, their expectations that the two leaders will cultivate a personal relationship for the two-day summit. President Xi is more personable and lively in, in meetings than his predecessor was, and therefore easier to get to know. Uh, President Obama is a very engaging person. I've met him. He's an easy person to talk to. Uh, and so I think we'll have to see whether they click or not. As relaxing as the state could make the two leaders feel, their issues of discussion can be anything but, from U.S. complaints about China's cyber intrusions to China's concerns about U.S. military's encirclement of Beijing through the so-called Asia pivot. To what extent will the two leaders address those concerns moving beyond the scripted talking points and what kind of personal relationship can come out of the meetings could decide where China-U.S. relations are going in the future. Wang Guan, CCTV, Adventure Mirage, California.